Hey everybody, this is Chris Thompson, and welcome to session number 21 of Brain Software with Dr. Mike Mandel. He wears ACDC boxer shorts, owns a large collection of edged weapons, and speaks English very, very well. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be back again, (laughs) and it's true about the ACDC boxer shorts. I'm wearing them right now, and how do I know? Because I always wear ACDC boxer shorts in recognition of the greatest rock band of all time. More about that later. We are broadcasting live from our studio in downtown Toronto, Canada, the most cosmopolitan, tolerant city on the planet, and the epicenter of global hypnosis. And I believe we have a guest today, don't we? Well, Chris, he's sitting beside you, so you really don't have to ask me that. Yes, I do, but I think that you're probably better positioned to introduce him than I am. I will introduce our guest. And this is our second guest, having had Didi on uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. Our guest today is a University of Toronto trained physicist. He is one of the planet's foremost street hypnotists, and he's a hell of a lot better looking than I am. Please welcome Gabriello Pittman to the Octagon. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, guys. So we're going to talk all about street hypnosis today. Now, this is kind of fun because I've never done any kind of stage hypnosis. I've not really done too much street hypnosis. Gabriella, you've done a ton of it. And Mike, you are the guru when it comes to stage hypnosis. So they are pretty... I don't want to be the stage hypnosis guru. Not it's the <laughs> bottom of the barrel. I want to be the god hypnosis incarnate in human form. One of the things you're a guru at is stage hypnosis. Let me clarify that so (laughs) this is mike mandel a reasonably good stage hypnotist (laughs) so let's start though i'm in seriousness i wanted to ask you guys both how similar are the two other than the size of the crowd well the principles are always essentially the same but i would love to hear gabriello's thoughts on this because from my perspective street street hypnosis is a fairly new thing but it's uh, growing in leaps and bounds i mean you cannot walk down the street in las vegas now without somebody on the strip coming up and attempting or asking if they can hypnotize you and this is a good thing because it gives more visibility to hypnosis but it demands a very very specific set of skills and maybe that's something you'd like to talk about sure absolutely so yeah, stage hypnosis and street hypnosis um, all have the same principles, right? It, it is hypnosis. I'd say the main difference is that in street hypnosis, for the most part, you're approaching the people to be hypnotized as opposed to people buying tickets to your show to come see a hypnosis show. So the, the main thing is that you have to, I don't want to say convince, but you have to make people feel comfortable being hypnotized on the spot. So that would be unique. And on the spot on the street as well. So there are a number of challenges in this. But anybody who wants to look on YouTube, you'll find there's a lot of interesting videos of street hypnosis. So clearly it is doable, isn't it? That's actually, I I just, I love this point because you're right. When someone goes to a show, they are expecting a hypnotist to show up on stage and he's got the authority. And when you walk up to somebody on the street, they don't know who you are. And you have to build that authority, you have to build influence and get them to agree to participate in the hypnosis. So how do you do it? That's the million dollar question. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go through a little bit of how you would approach somebody on the street, I guess, right? So by street hypnosis, it can happen on the street, but we even mean doing hypnosis at a party for a group of people or even in a bar or a nightclub, wherever it may be. It essentially means that you're doing hypnosis anywhere other than on a stage where people don't know that you're a hypnotist until you introduce yourself. So one of the main things is when you introduce yourself to a group of people, you need to come in and build rapport very quickly. Otherwise, they're never going to trust you and they're never going to let you hypnotize them because they're probably going to think you're going to steal their wallet. So the main thing to do is to come in with an energy that is equivalent or slightly higher than the energy of the group. So if the group is sitting there having a beer, kind of just chilling out, sitting at a table, you want to approach with the same energy. But if the group is a really high energy and um, say like screaming and laughing and yelling, you want to approach them with the same kind of energy, not like a nut bar, but with more energy. Right, so you're engaging them right away, essentially where they are, as opposed to walking over mumbling and something. Yeah, you really have to hit them right away because you're only going to get one shot at this with any given group, right? This is, in NLP, this is essentially matching and mirroring in terms of rapport building skill, right? Completely, yeah, that's exactly it. You also have to notice that you're essentially asking for some of their energy, right? You're asking them to listen to you for a minute. And if you're not more interesting or at least equivalent in interesting level, which didn't make any sense. I got it, though. (laughs) Okay. um, Then they're going to have no reason to listen to you. They're going to think you're boring and you're going to suck their energy away from them and they're not going to want to listen. 
to what you have. So how do you appear high on the interest spectrum? Nice one, Chris. <laughs> so, yeah, you want to approach with the same amount of energy that they have or slightly more energy so that they're excited to listen to you. Another thing that's really good to do is when you approach, approach immediately with a compliment. Everybody likes to get complimented. Now, don't make it weird. Um, but yeah. even <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of things just went through my head there. And hey, I went... nice underwear. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, I feel like I had to say that because some people want to approach and say, hey, I think you're really cute if it's a guy approaching girls, right? But you don't really want to do that. You just want to say something simple like, hey, you guys look like you're a lot of fun, right? So it's a nice compliment. It's kind of generic, and it's something that they can – they can appreciate and kind of understand. Sure, and they're, they're going to trigger the yes set right away because nobody's going to say, no, actually, we're a boring group of stupid idiots. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> comment. I love that. So you've kind of got them right away. So actually, there's a quick model that I'll, I'll talk about, and this is from Ross Jeffries, who, who calls it CIQ. So he approaches with a, a compliment every time. The next thing to do is then introduce yourself because they're wondering who the heck you are to begin with. And um, Can we say heck on this broadcast, Chris? Um... Sure, what the heck? No, heck is not on the what list. What the heck? Okay. <laughs> All right, I won't use it again. <laughs> oh, so, no, it's okay. <laughs> He's just joking around. I'm kidding. Um, so so introduce was yourself. You want to introduce yourself. So you want to keep it really simple. The main thing is that you want to, want to let them know that you are a hypnotist because the goal here is not to just approach them and have a conversation. The goal is to actually do some hypnosis. And if they don't take you seriously about that, then it'll never happen. So you want to introduce yourself as a hypnotist. So normally what I would say is, um, hi guys, you look like a fun group. My name is Gabriello, and for the most part, I'll be with a friend. I don't usually do this alone. Um, I'll say this is my got friend. a wingman. I got a wingman every time. Uh, this is my friend. I'll introduce my friend, then I'll say we're both performers in the city, or we're both hypnotists. And then they're going to say, okay, cool. In their minds, what you want to do to engage them right away is ask a question, and preferably an open-ended question. So. What, if you, what, what do you guys think about hypnosis? Or even a yes or no question that might lead to a bit of an explanation like, have you guys ever seen someone hypnotized before? So you're opening a loop, a conversational loop with them, a short-term relationship that is now going to give you an opportunity to pry the door a little further open. I presume you're going to do suggestibility tests or something at this point. Right, absolutely. So you'll let them talk a little bit. And by saying I'm a hypnotist, it's always going to be intriguing for them. So they'll say, oh, are you going to hypnotize me? Or, oh, yeah, I saw my friend who was hypnotized or something. Can you help me quit smoking? <laughs> yeah, on occasion, you will get somebody who will ask you something like that. But, yeah, it just depends who you're approaching. Right? Well, if anyone ever asks you that, you should use my line, Gabriello. A number of times over the last 38 years, people say, can okay. you help me quit smoking? I say, no, I don't do that. But if you're a non-smoker and you want to get started, I can get you up to four packs a day, and I guarantee you'll be hooked for life. <laughs> now, that's easy, seriously. I love it. But I, I also love the idea that you go up and immediately start talking about hypnosis. Because what, what do all your students learn? Talking about trance causes, causes trance. trance. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, from, from there, you've, you've introduced yourself, and everybody's kind of on par with what's going on. They know that you're a hypnotist. They presume that you're going to want to try and hypnotize them. But a nice way to kind of lead into it without saying, hey, do you want to try something right away, is to throw in a yes set. So I'll always do something very simple, like let's say we're at a bar and the bar has a certain name. I will say, we're all here right now at blank, insert the bar's name, which they unconsciously say yes to. You can even state the time, like it's 10 p.m. right now, we're all hanging out having a good time. They've now said yes to three things without even knowing it, making you more of an authority and making them just agree to you. Yes, and for those who are not familiar, yes.